It's time for Dirt Daily, and today's Dirt Daily is presented by OnX Off-Road. OnX Off-Road is an app. It has a map. On the map, on the app, it will show you where to go four-wheeling, whether you are anywhere in America. If you're looking for trails, you can find that. Um, also, you can sign up for the OnX Off-Road Elite membership, and you'll get discounts from other manufacturers that are also a part of the Elite program. Uh, this is not like the Illuminati Actually, I have no idea. It might be. I don't know what the Illuminati is really like. But I can tell you that you get discounts from off-road companies that are members of the Elite program. Companies such as uh, Marlin Crawler, uh, Fox, the shock company, uh, Yukon Gear and Axle. Um, so there's a bunch of great members of this Elite company. I don't, or the Elite program. I don't remember all of them. But if you sign up for that, you get more stuff. So check it out. Today's uh, video, I am going to work on my Dirty 80 Series Land Cruiser. Uh, I really like this thing. It's kind of old. It's kind of ugly. It was cool once. It's not as cool anymore. It was, it's been replaced by younger, hipper, cool guys, cool trucks. Uh, but it's not done. It's still got some life in it, and I'm going to do some cool stuff with it. I'm going to rip those ugly flares off and maybe put a better suspension under it, put some bigger tires on it. You know, do all the stuff that trucks need to make them even cooler, even if they're old, a little bit ugly, got a few miles, a few dents, uh, not perfect, but still people love them. All right, that's it. Let's get down to the shop and tear into this thing. Buckle up for safety. This Land Cruiser is going to be really cool someday. Um, I have a lift kit to go on it, but I think today's project is going to be removing these flares. Uh, one of them has already fallen off. They kind of look cooler. I mean, there's two kind of frames of thought. You can keep it nice. Like there's one of these things that just sold on Bring a Trailer for $165,000. It had, I want to say 6,500 miles on it. So they're definitely becoming more valuable. On the other hand, this one has over 300,000 miles and it's not going to end up on Bring a Trailer for 165 grand. What it is going to end up on is the trail and it's going to just go out there and have some fun. Uh, it has these flares. I don't think that all of them came with that. In fact, I always liked the look of these trucks where they didn't have tinted windows. It was just clear glass all the way around and they were kind of like that bush truck, uh, United Nations style where it's just kind of like super utilitarian. Uh, so. My plan is to remove the flares today, gut the back of the thing. Uh, somebody asked me about the third row seating and they, some other Land Cruiser owner was looking for the seats. I don't have that many friends or kids to take with me or any kids. So um, basically I just need a room for a cooler and two little dogs. So the plan I think will be to gut the back of it. Um, probably keep the back seats. I had the whole interior ripped up already because I was going to figure out something to do with the carpet. So today we're gonna take the back seats out, take the flares off and get it ready to do the suspension. That's gonna be the next thing on the list. But I think today is just a little bit of prep work. Look at this flares already falling off. I'm going to start with this piece of flare right here. Basically, this one is the easiest one to remove. There's just two 10 millimeter bolts and then a little clip that kind of presses into the door. The top clip is already broken, so I can just undo that. The bottom one is bent. That one just is underneath the bottom here. And then that piece of flare is gone. Now this does leave a little bit to be desired because there are two brackets. There's one down here at the bottom, one here at the top that are actually riveted right to the sheet metal. And then there's kind of a pressed in plug that the flare had kind of clipped over 
and that's broken, but still pressed in there. So that brings up what to do at this stage. I'm going to just drill out these rivets and then pry out this clip and then there will be nothing there except for some holes in the door. I'm just gonna use a step bit. Once you drill through the aluminum part of those rivets, everything falls right off. Then to get this plug out, you just get a body tool pop it out. Most of it falls apart as you're doing that and everything is out. You are left with a couple holes in the sheet metal. Two holes here, two holes here, and kind of an oblong shaped hole there. That is something we will have to come up with a plan to deal with. There's a, there's a couple different ideas of what you could do to fix that. Um, we'll discuss that later in the episode. I'm going to jump to this front flare next. Now, one thing about the front flare is that it's much easier to remove if you don't have a bumper like this because there's actually a bolt that protrudes up into the bottom of the flare right where this bumper goes under the flare. So that's kind of a problem. I may have to uh, break part of the flare to get it off of there because I really don't want to take the bumper back off just to remove the flare. First step though, is there's one little screw that holds your turn signal on and you're going to want to remove that and pull the turn signal out. Now that screw is the only fastener that holds it in. Then it just kind of pops into some sort of receptacles. You need to pull this out and then slowly work it out and then fold it out, hold it out of the way so you can get your arm inside the fender and remove some other fasteners on the back of the flare. You're going to want to be careful removing the headlight Sometimes they fight you, sometimes they fall right out. However, uh, these headlights are getting harder to find and more expensive, so just set that up out of the way. My driver's side is already cracked. This one actually came out much easier than the driver's side. Now you're gonna wanna look inside the fender and you can actually see three fasteners as well as a whole bunch of spider webs. Uh, there are basically studs that stick in to the fender from the back of the flare and there are little tiny 10 millimeter nuts on each of them. The front two aren't too bad. You can reach your arm in there and undo them. Just watch out for a black widow tarantula or some sort of other uh, Japanese spider. That the third one, that one that's way back there in the back, that one is a little bit more difficult because you have to reach in from the engine bay and get around the antenna motor, but you can do it. Have you guys ever used a max mat? This is a thing that's made by Max Custom Tie Downs. Mine is really old and barely staying together, but it's actually much better than laying on either your cold concrete floor or just a dirty concrete floor. This one has been burnt multiple times from welding or hot things falling on it, but it makes laying underneath your project vehicle that much nicer. There's one more screw right back here, a little 10 millimeter guy. We're gonna back that one out. And most of this fender is ready to fall off. All right, all the fasteners are out on the back of the flare. There's one more. Now on the passenger side, this one's actually pretty easy to get access to. Uh, on the driver's side, it was pinched right between the top of the bumper and the bottom of the flare, uh, which might've been because the bumper was bent and the body had been wrecked. But on this side, it was super easy. Well, bam, fender flare is removed. Now you could do a couple things. Some people like to clean these up and repaint them. Um, I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, I could probably sell these or find some Land Cruiser buddy that wants to trade something cool for it. Um, the driver's side one is a little bit beat up and we still have to get the rearmost one off, but it's coming together. There are, does have these holes though that we will have to figure out a solution for. And back here on the back, there's another one of those kind of plastic inserts that needs to come off. 
What's left is this rear section of flare, and in order to get that off, we're going to have to access it from inside. Now, the back of the Land Cruiser has kind of become a dumping ground for all of the interior parts. So I'm going to lift all this stuff out, as well as remove those rear jump seats because somebody was interested in those. Oh, and also remove this rattlesnake. So the way these seats work, it's actually pretty ingenious, which all of these Land Cruiser parts usually are. There's a hook that hooks to the grab handle up here. This folds down, the back flips up, and you have third row seating. Now, to remove this, there are three bolts right here. There's one. And I think we can probably get the other five or four from up top here. Two, three, four. Five. Whew. Impact almost died. And you just fold this out and you have a lot more room in the bed for cargo. Don't forget to snap a pic so that you can post this on Marketplace. Moving the driver's side fender on the way back is pretty easy. You just open this panel that hides your jack and then down inside here there are some more of those studs that stick through from the flare and you just grab a 10 millimeter wrench reach down in there and loosen those up on the passenger side you're going to have to pull this panel and it's just kind of snaps in and when this folds out there's one piece here that goes underneath the back metal flashing, so you can probably just fold that down until it pops out, and then this whole panel lifts out of the way. Once you get that panel off, you'll see two studs sticking through the sheet metal. They have little tiny 10 millimeter nuts on them. You'll just undo those, and then we'll move back out to the outside of the car. Oh, another thing, while you have that panel off, now's a good time to remove the rear seat belts if you are getting rid of your third row seats. We're just about done with the flare removal. Uh, there's a bolt that goes right in here, but it's hidden by the rear bumper cover. I'm gonna remove the rear bumper cover right now because that's gonna end up leaving this project and get something new replaced. So this you can kind of unscrew. There's three little screws that hold the front of that in. And then we're just gonna throw this in here and remove a 10 millimeter bolt that's hidden by the bumper cover. And once that is out, this flare will fall right off. Not a bunch of dirt and dust. But luckily, there's not any rust hidden back there. So this brings up the next step. What do we do about these holes in the body? Some of them are easy. You could just, uh, well, there's a couple different methods for dealing with this. Um, some people like to replace that flare and that lower third of the body with bed liner and you can actually put like a metallic tape on the inside of the body behind these holes and then bed liner over the whole thing and it'll just kind of seal it all the way up. Um, I kind of love and hate bed liner on the exterior vehicles. It never really ends up that cool looking. So another option is to come in here and sand the paint off and weld those up. One thing that I haven't seen people do, but might actually be kind of cool, would be to get like some Allen button heads and just put them right back in here 
and put a nut on the back side. You'd probably need two people, one person to hold an Allen wrench out here um, and another person inside with an impact or a wrench to tighten it up, but that could give it a cool look. These on the door would be trickier because you can't really get access to the backs of these. So probably um, grinding the paint and welding these up would be the best option. I've also thought about like some of these body panels, like the ones on my Forerunner are square. Maybe you could find some little uh, clips that would pop in there, uh, or, or maybe you could find like a little carriage bolt that would fit in that square. Um, it all kind of depends on what type of fit and finish you want it to have. Uh, unfortunately, I'm finding that my Toyotas are starting to have a theme where I remove all the exterior flares and don't put anything back on and just kind of leave it. I have the benefit of living in a state where it doesn't get a lot of rust, so things seem to work out okay. But now that there's no flare here, and we know that these holes go directly into the inside of the body panel, it could get rain or water or mud or whatever thrown in there. So I should probably come up with a solution. I know that Eastwood um, actually offers a kit where you can like drill out holes and then they have little plugs that you put in there and weld them in. So there's a lot of different options on how you could go about finishing this off. I'm gonna pop all these little plastic things out that the screws would go in and probably just scuff this whole thing with like a rough sponge and try to get all the dirt off. <laughs> Somehow my Land Cruiser is just like my shop. Whenever there's empty space, it fills up with stuff. This is actually, the old man emu suspension that's gonna go on the Land Cruiser in a future episode. But for now, I'm gonna put it on the lift and delete the trailer hitch and the rear bumper and hopefully be, figure out how to drop the spare tire. You may be asking why remove the trailer hitch? Isn't a trailer hitch useful? It is. But this one kind of hangs down a bit and I'm just gonna get it off of here for now. Maybe later on it'll come back. Maybe I'll cut it up and reintegrate it into a, some stylish, more better off-road capable bumper. But for now, I'm just gonna get it off and out of the way. There are some recovery hooks that were attached to the back here using the recovery hooks to actually hold up the trailer hitch. So we'll definitely hold on to those. We'll just stash all this stuff in the corner for now, kind of delete everything, and then we'll have a clean slate to start with. Seems like most of this bumper is just some plastic. <laughs> Over sheet metal. I don't really see if there's another. Oh yeah, there's some other brackets up inside there. Looks like some stubby little 12 millimeter guys. Look at that. More useless plastic out of the way.
Oh, come on. Scratch some paint. Bummer. I deleted the flares off the side of the Land Cruiser. I removed the plastic sheet metal bumper. Uh, I also removed the trailer hitch. And now I just need to get this spare tire out of here. And I think we're done for the day. Now the spare tire is held up with like a, a chain winch type thing. And of course this thing with 300,000 miles, the tool to lower the tire is missing. Um, so I think I have a backup plan. I am able to reach up on top of the cross member that that winch thing bolts to. And I think uh, with a few bolts removed, the whole shooting match will drop out. So hopefully it doesn't fall and crush me. Uh, it feels like it's... I didn't hurt myself. Another successful day in the shop. All right, that's it for this Dirt Daily. The Land Cruiser is a great truck, even if it's kind of a pile of junk, old and worn out, it's just gonna get better. That's it, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, and don't forget, go to Onyx Off-Road and use the 4 by Fred discount code. You get a discount on your Onyx Off-Road app and you can go find some cool trails. And hopefully someday, you'll see me on those trails in this thing. I just got a hundred more things to get done on it. See you guys next time. So majestic.